This past weekend is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Gray Block Pizza, get that hitter. Hey, boy, you got some money, boy? Yeah, I might have some. And if I do have it, I have it in my Ridge wallet. Over there, over there. What's that over there? That's a Ridge wallet. Ridge wallet is that special front pocket carry. You know, a lot of times things in your back pocket and you don't even know what's happening. Oh, what's happening? Change that. Change your lifestyle. Get that front pocket carry, that hitter. Go to RidgeWallet.com slash hitter and use code hitter at checkout for 10% off. That's code hitter, H-I-T-T-E-R, for 10% off at RidgeWallet.com slash hitter. Now, you know I've been using that Ridge for probably one year, uno año, and I'm doing fine. And also, your Ridge, that Ridge hitter can, can block a bullet tree. So if somebody fires a bullet at you close range, maybe your wife or your ex-wife or your side piece or a man you're seeing that your wife didn't even know that you dated men. Anything could happen these days. So take care of your money. Keep it in the front of your person. And that is with that Ridge wallet. RidgeWallet.com slash Hitter and use code Hitter for 10% off. Today's guest is a young fellow who um, you may know him from Barstool. And if you don't know what Barstool is, you're going to learn about it. It's not just an Instagram. Uh, he was a, a, a athlete, athletician, an athlete, a backup quarterback at University of North Carolina, which a lot of people didn't know that, but you're going to know that. And also this man is is a unique man and a novelty man. Today's guest is Caleb Presley. Uh, welcome, Caleb Presley. How are you, man? Doing well. Thank you for having me. Yeah. This is very exciting. Oh, yeah, well, I appreciate you coming, man. Um... You know, I know that you work with Barstool, you know, and that's a wild organization. And I've been up there. I've been over to their fourth floor office or seventh floor, maybe. Um, and it's like 40 dudes, inebriates almost, it seems like, <laughs> yeah, you know? For sure, yeah. A lot of men, a lot of troubled men. I remember I met a couple of fellas, maybe closeted kind of guys and kind of a couple of Rubenesque boys. A lot of guys who would have been models maybe in like the 1400s you know a lot of body type a lot of wild body types in there that was your main takeaways that's yeah. interesting well you always hear about barstool like oh they're shit you know that's a shady organization what are these guys up to you yeah, know for real. they're gonna get busted for money laundering like you always hear like which is they're yeah. always on the cusp of things you know yeah it's not out of the question yeah they're they're, yeah. they're, <laughs> yeah. they're kind of like the richard nixon of the um of like online you yeah, know right? a lot of and a lot of people don't know what it is either that's the thing i didn't know what it was yeah. i was was like i didn't know if it was gonna be like one of those drunk buses that's going around town and like <laughs> and you gotta pedal it <laughs> yeah i was like yeah so so explain to people a little bit who don't know what barstool is let's start right there i mean barstool is is what you said it is kind of um it's interesting because there's so, it's a lot of different things at the at the top level it's just a lifestyle brand okay i mean that's at the end of the day and it started as a men's lifestyle brand now we got so many girls that are like so successful that are doing more doing better than the guys that it's it's hard to say it's a men's lifestyle brand only but that's how it started right and that's what it is it's i mean sports media but it's also like you were there you kind of you got a feel for the whole gauntlet of there's a lot of entry points yeah there's a lot of things you can do yeah there's a lot of entry points that's a good that's a good point uh, that's a that's a good entry point right there they had um yeah, one thing I thought was interesting, like I got up there, because I didn't know what to expect. And literally, I'm in the elevator, then the doors open. Yeah. And then there's. And then you're like, in it. Yeah, then you're in it. Yeah. And it's like, um, it looked like about one twelfth or one sixteenth of a, maybe one twelfth of a gymnasium floor yeah. space. So just like the free throw line. Yeah, like and, the, and the paint. Yeah. It was basically the paint. The paint. Yeah. And then wall to wall sideways. Like it was a pretty decent amount of space. Yeah, you could get a three off if yeah, you, you could. To. Yeah, yeah, you could. <laughs> yeah. Or if you're a Latino and you're playing on your lunch break, seventeen on seventeen at a local play playground, you could get off a six pointer. You know, <laughs> a lot of those guys will fire off that six pointer. Um, but yeah, the doors open, and I'm like, holy shit! Now I'm in the, you know, in the liver of Barstool, man. Yeah. And it was pretty wild. Yeah, it's it's a 
the liver's not doing well. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But we're moving offices. Next time you come back whenever uh, we get we'll get a new office and it's the thing about Barstool, dude, is I started working there right at college. Right. Um, I went to North Carolina for college. I played yeah, football. Yeah, I'm familiar. There. Yeah, I know you played backup quarterback there. Yep. You played quarterback. Sorry, I didn't mean to say ba- that. No, I was backup. I was it, definitely backup. Who were you backup to over there? So I was backup. A lot of people. So I went to college with the most famous guy I went to college with quarterback-wise was Mitch Trubisky, okay. who's the quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Yeah. I don't know how much you follow football. Oh, yeah, I like the Bears, actually. And I thought Trubisky was a reachy pick, but I think he has a lot. I think he has some upside. I think in the next two years, he's going to have to definitely show it or he's going to be. Well, he, he, had a good, he had a good year last year. Last he's, year, he did. And he's one of my best friends. I was roommates with him in college. Oh, wow. We had queen bunk beds. Wow. What is that? It's a bunk beds, but queen size. So it's like bunk beds for men. Oh, wow. <laughs> Why don't we have that, Nick? <laughs> I'm down. Yeah, okay. King, fuck him. Uh, you, yeah. you guys live together? Uh-uh. <laughs> sure, but though. Nick sleeps in here sometimes, and I don't want him to feel alone. So we'll put an extra bunk. <laughs> yeah. We'll throw an extra bunk. Dude, it was great for bonding, dude. I got to be honest. Like, I, I never felt closer to somebody. Yeah. Just knowing he was always under me. Uh, yeah, I bet, you know dude, Yeah. I was he always bunk. had your back. Or I was top bunk, yeah. Depending on how you were sleeping. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, did he? Does he feel a lot of pressure once he got up to the where he's at now? Dude, I mean, he obviously he didn't say to me like, "Dude, I'm feeling a lot of pressure right now." But uh, I think, how could you not? Yeah. At first, especially because he was such a high pick, he was the number two pick, and he probably didn't expect that. Yeah, I mean, it was crazy. I was at the draft with him. Oh wow! And so when we got to the draft, we were kind of hearing because they have all these agents and they're like kind of telling you what to expect, like where he's gonna go, and he's from Cleveland. And so the first pick was Cleveland. And so it was kind of like a hometown story. Oh, yeah. And the and Cleveland will take any quarter. I mean, they'll take fucking – they took nine quarterbacks yeah. one year. I mean, at that point, they would have took a wide receiver that, <laughs> that could have played, you know? <laughs> but but uh, so we were like thinking – I want him to go to Cleveland because I was like, yo, if you go to Cleveland, you win four games, they'll build a statue of you. Yeah, you're a legend. Yeah, and you don't really have to do much other than that. And yeah. then you can go home for dinner or whatever. Yeah. Um, but – he did. They, anyways, he was the number one ranked quarterback coming out, which was crazy because there was like Deshaun Watson was in the same uh, year. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Mahomes was in the same year, which is wow. Which is, dude, that's a bunch of good quarterbacks. That's so he go was the number one guy, though. That's gonna go down historically as a great class. I think all those guys could be Super Bowl champions when it's all said and done. But, um, anyways, we were hearing where it was gonna go, and I think it was like Kansas City was one of the other ones that we heard. But then Chicago traded up for that pick, and then so when they traded. Uh, and we found out, yeah, dude, it was crazy. I, and I, honestly, I'm gonna keep it 100 percent real with you. I don't remember what your question was. Yeah, uh, it all started with you saying you got a uh, the job at Barstool right out of college, and then we just moved to football. Yeah, you oh, got yeah. it right out of college. So when you're there, are you telling guys like, hey, you know, I'm his backup. You know, pick me. You know, for support? but dude, I never, I never backed him up. I was always in front of him because I was older. Oh, so he was a freshman when I was like uh, a junior, and so I was actually second string. When he was redshirting. Did he ever have to come out because like his shoe was undone and you had to fucking go in there? Dude, I don't know how else to tell you this, but I was in front of him. Wow. So that never happened. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you started. He I was, was second, second string. string. <laughs> right. But he was a freshman. He was redshirting. So he wasn't even like in the mix. Oh, wow. Like there was another guy that was giving me problems and who that was, was that in guy? front of me. Marquise Williams. And that's a darker guy. <laughs> and that was a darker guy. Yeah. And it still is. And today, right now, who's better right now to you and Marquise? I mean, dude, he still tried to play in the in the AAF. Oh wow, did he? Which was that new? Wow, league. good for him, man. It's a tough thing, dude. It was tough. Did you see what happened? I know. I just know it went under. I watched San Antonio. Some guy got shot in the parking lot. Yeah, I just saw that first hit that everybody was going crazy about yeah. that first game, but it didn't stick. I mean, honestly, I don't know a lot about it other than it went under, and I had a lot of teammates who were playing. Wow, who were did- playing on the teams, and they just like they got like charged for their hotels. They're yeah, like, yo, did you owe us like? Uh, you got two waters and yours for those as well. Damn. And Marquise is one of them. So it's hard for me to say that he's that I'm better than him Because he's still playing. He's still playing, which right. I haven't thrown a football in a long time. And and at the end of the day, dude, I really was never much of a physical specimen. I was always more mental. That The, the, the sharp, yeah, the brain. Yeah, right. That brain. That daddy. was how I got there. Well, yeah, dude, I, I used to be friends with J.P. Losman when he played at um, Tulane. Mm-hmm. And he was more physical, and I think he was – you know, I think he was 50-50 on the mental side. Which a lot of guys are less. Right. So maybe that he was good, probably. Oh, dude, I met Aaron Brooks one time at a buffet, and he didn't know how a buffet worked. And he was, <laughs> and this was years after he'd been on the Saints. So he was probably 10-90 mental. 
He threw that football backwards that one time. Yeah, he did. Oh, he'd throw it at anybody, dude. If he knew you in the stands, one time he saw Joe Horn in the – he thought he saw Joe Horn in the stands, and it was just a fan with a jersey on. Yo, so you're a huge Saints fan then. I'm a big Saints fan, man, yeah. What about that – But uh, I love the Bears too, man. My mother uh, – <laughs> wow, unbelievable. My mother grew up in Louisiana, so. My mother grew up in Illinois, so I'm a big uh, – I'm a big Bears fan. Yo, that's but, how they used to play football, how he just threw it backwards like yeah. that. You didn't used to be able to <laughs> throw it for They had to yeah. do that. <laughs> Those are the old days. Um, do you miss any of that? I mean, it sounds like you went right from something that's a really big thing, football, to, like, was Barstool as big then when you got right no, into it? No, and that's kind of, I think, where my thought process started with the question was that uh, when I first started at Barstool, dude, it was like, you know, it was a guy who, his name's Dave Portnoy. Oh, yeah, I've seen him eating the pizza. Eating the pizza. He's awesome. Is he awesome? Awesome. He's uh, he's very polarizing. Yeah, I could see that. But dude, he's 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 real, which is like for me personally, if you're real, I'm good. That's like, it. And that's he is who he is, and he's not he's not putting up one thing over here on the internet, and then he's not acting a different way. That's wow. how he is. But uh, anyway, so he started it, and he hit me up in college because uh, we played Duke on a Thursday night, and they did a special on me. You know, how ESPN will sometimes do a special during one of the they come back from timeout and they'll run a special. Yeah. So ESPN did a special on me and he saw it and it was kind of a funny thing because mm-hmm. I was, this is a whole nother story, but I was my senior year, uh, the supervisor of morale. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that for our team. I know about that. Yeah, you su- so you're really to cheer. You're like a you're like an infiltrate someone who's infiltrated the team, but you're also like a low key like the James Bond of fucking cheerleaders. Yeah, exactly, dude. I mean, that's honestly that was when I knew. I knew fake news like, in America dun, 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 go to. was going to be a problem. Because, <laughs> oh, you really? Yeah, because because uh, I really wasn't, honestly, the supervisor of morale at all. Right. But I was just hanging out one day during, uh, it was like during the summer during uh, training camp. And I was just hanging out, and the girl from USA Today was there to interview our coach, Coach Fedora. Mm-hmm. And so I was hanging out in one of the offices that I had, they had a free office, and I and I knew the people. I'd been there for four years, so I was like, right. "Let me so get you the office." The, yeah. And then the USA Today girl was there, and I was like, "Yo, tell her that uh, that I'm like supervising all y'all's morale, and that this is going to be a new position." I and love I had that. and I had someone whisper in her ear on her way out, and she was like, "Do you mind if I talk to him?" Yeah, because then it's like a secret. Now she got a tip, dude. She did an interview with me for like 20 minutes. Wow. This girl named Nicole Auerbach. Which yeah. shout out to her. You really started uh, my entire career. NA out there, they call it, they call her NA, which is also Narcotics Anonymous, which is a group I'm part of. Yeah. So she wrote this article, which is a USA Today. This was off, dude. I just made. I had someone tell her as she was walking out of the building that I was a fake job, and she wrote the next day an article in USA Today saying it was real. And then after that, it was real. Oh, yeah, man. I love it. I can relate to that. I, one time, my girlfriend, her mom, when I went to LSU, was the women's athletic director, and uh, some girl uh, some girl on the LSU soccer team told me that their team was um, having to take uh, – having to take – um, creatine. That's when creatine came out. It was that big hitter. Bro, you know I took, what I'm saying? You didn't take creatine? It was making baby milk hard in the tit. Like, it was doing bad stuff. You know, yeah. babies were having to fucking, you know, really squeeze the tit to get something out of it. Thick milk. And, um, oh, I took it, dude. But he said that the... But anyway, I one of the girls on the soccer team told me that the girls on the soccer team had to take it. The coach made them do yeah, it. Yeah, right, right. So next thing you know, I'll put all these flyers up around campus one night. The coach's name was Fotopoulos. I think he ended up marrying a, um, a famous... Uh, female soccer player but i wrote these signs that said fatapa hitler and put them all over campus right so look <laughs> next thing you know i got a couple of my friends that were h cappers bro a couple of real handicaps vans and everything you know what i'm saying people yeah. that were going deep people at 50 50 on if they were going to live through their diploma you know right so when i got them to come out in wheelchairs and everything and like assistant vans and uh pick it the next morning so uh, my girlfriend's mom is women's P- AD. Wait, 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 wait. The picket, the creatine? To picket, yeah, like outside of the women's athletic Like no facility. more creatine. Yeah, no yeah. more creatine. <laughs> right. Like uh, you're making creatits. That's what one of the signs said. Yeah, like right. just really vague fucking uh, don't quit dirtying up that these- uh, Their livers. Yeah, the yeah. livers, the ovaries. We were fucking dropping some crazy <laughs> shit, right. right? So next thing you know, there's news coverage out there. There's like handicapped kids like just <laughs> cheering. like And literally, there's one point where the mom comes down. She's like, what in the fuck is going on, Theo? Like, you stayed at my house this weekend. Why didn't you say there was an issue? <laughs> um, because I was seeing her daughter. And at that point, you heard like this van come up, this super handicapped van, like a two-story. Like, 
Like this dude was handicapped but flexing, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, like he'd have bitches stay over, you know? And you heard like, we got reinforcements. <laughs> and that's when you knew like, damn, this shit was getting real. <laughs> and anyway, we made a fake news story out of what was going on. Did it cause a rift in your relationship? Oh, it caused a Yeah, she and I. Yeah, and then they found some. I was using... Uh, I think test 200 at the time and I left some fucking dirty you know ne dirty uh, hypodermic needles at their house and it was just a bad weekend overall but um, what a hypocrite yeah it's a good point huh <laughs> yeah. I didn't even think about that <laughs> I didn't even fucking think about that dude I wonder if the mom ever thought that <laughs> Yeah, I just thought like, well, fuck yeah, I'm in a dorm. Of course, I can do steroids, <laughs> but you can't make these chicks do them, <laughs> you, you know. Uh, anyway, so you ended up becoming the um, supervisor of morale, right? Which was, uh, you know, like I said, it was kind of fake. But it was, dude, I was, I was giving speeches. I mean, I was, damn, I was elevated to a, the type of character, <laughs> the type of character where, dude, I'm not kidding. I was in, uh, That's awesome. bro, the height of my entire college <laughs> career was. And not necessarily because I'm like a pervert or, mm -hmm. or you know, I'm like sex crazy or anything like that. But just when I knew that I had I had kind of made it for college. Right. I'm not talking about life. I'm just talking about in college. You ever seen the movie like Van Wilder? Yeah, yeah. I just watched it a month ago. Right. So I'm kind of like thinking like I made it was I got to give a speech, dude, to this, this sorority called Zeta, mm -hmm. uh, which is like at Carolina was one of the top sororities. And I got to give them a speech at their banquet about like. They're about to like graduate. Dude, I was about to graduate. I was still in school and I gave them a speech about like what they should do, like a like a commencement, commencement speech. Commencement speech, yeah. And I was still in school and I was wow. like, dude, like, and I was inside, it was all girls. I was inside their sorority house mm -hmm. and I was giving a speech. It's online. I mean, you can watch the speech. I'm not sure if it was, uh, you know, I don't know if it would move you, but yeah. uh, it moved me, Yeah, you know? That's, so at that point, then you coming out of school, you kind of are on a little bit of a high then because that kind of happened toward the end of school. Yeah, totally. Right. Totally. And then so that's also when Barstool offered me a job. And like, so they saw that and they reached out. They're like, oh, this is a guy that we could right, use. Right. And then I started like, I would host some. Yeah. Look, look, I mean, this is. Jesus Christ. Do you want to watch it? No, Listen no. A minute. I don't know if we should watch it. Mm, right. well, let's go maybe about. Let's hear <laughs> oh, a little. God. Quarterback here for the last three years. So by nature of that, I've gotten in with a lot of older men. Let's go. Uh, oh, you call your guy that got busted breaking and entering, and you're trying to explain. Yeah, yourself. dude. I just came back from Europe. You can tell. I don't know what that does. That v neck. Look at them laughing, though. You see that? There, there is something to be said for like people using those cliches because it is. It's something deeper than your mind. It's a feeling. This is a time, dude. This is out there. This is a time in my life when you must have went to Amsterdam. I was watching a lot of Russell Brand clips. Oh yeah, dude. Dude, uh, and by the way, dude, Bro, what is Russell Brand? Is he gonna fucking admit he's in the guys, Bible? Guys, or, can I or say not? something? Yeah. Okay, first of all, disclaimer: Russell Brand at this, especially this time. I'm not kidding. I loved him at this time. Yeah. He's probably my number one. Like, who's your number one person? If they're like Theo, we can introduce you to this person. You can hang out with him for the day. Uh, hmm. Let me think about that. Probably either maybe. Mm, fuck, I don't know, man. I was a big Michael Landon fan, but he died. People know that. And then outside of that, maybe, maybe little Wayne. But I think I get tired. Maybe I mean, Boosie Badass. One. Boosie's a good one. Wayne for me too. But um, anyways, damn Wayne. But Wayne's an easy one. I mean, everybody would pick him. Maybe you yeah. know who's like right place, right time, like just killing it right when it mattered. But um, and that and you met Russell Brand. No, but anyways, I'm sorry. So so Russell Brand's my number one. Right. I love Russell Brand. Uh, just I don't know what you know I could I would have to think about why he's motivational he's motivational he's smart he's he's kind of counterculture he uh I don't know I think he's hilarious he bang, yeah he made love to Katy Perry he was mm -hmm. banging everybody <laughs> yeah I mean at one point in my life I thought that was super cool yeah um not that it's not cool shout out to Russell Brand anyways dude so he's my number one so I come out here to LA mm -hmm. and I go to uh, my girlfriend works at Soul Cycle mm -hmm. in in New York and mm -hmm. so I've been to a few classes so I know it's a good way to like kind of if you do a long flight kind of reestablish your equilibrium oh wow you know what i'm saying sweat it out hmm. and uh so i went to soul cycle it was probably four people in my class five people in west hollywood one of them was russell brand one of them was russell brand oh my god bro what'd <laughs> this you morning. do first this morning yes and what'd you do dude i don't i just i soul cycle my ass off dude i don't know i just tried my hardest i didn't w talk was to it him. rankings on the thing Wait, what do you mean? Like oh, no, first, no, no. second, third, fourth? No, I wish. Oh, fuck. It was his first class ever. Sure. He always says that. I bet to get pussy. <laughs> um, did he seem like he... What did he seem like? What, awesome, what was his dude. vibe like? Awesome, dude. He's 
he he to me he has like this type of presence where dude i went and saw him speak one time when he came to new york he was just like speaking yeah but they'll let anybody speak they let fucking caleb presley speak at a fucking zeta commencement <laughs> yo that's true that's true but <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> like they'll let people speak anywhere bro yeah and this was in like brooklyn too which was like that's a it's a damn near open mic but uh did your girl say that he hit on her or no no she wasn't there i just oh, knew i had there. that she's not here i just she, you knew just that. know that it'll help from a plane flight so i just yeah i just want to do do some exercise i didn't want to be like uh you know like hung over from the flight right and dude he came in and he walked right by me i was like huh. and i didn't say anything to him because i mean from barstool and i'm sure you're times a million but from barstool there are certain areas especially like colleges where you know there are people come up to you all the time and so you I feel like from those experiences, I've learned a little bit about like what I would do if I did see a Russell Brand. Right. And in this scenario, I was like, I'm not going to bother. You felt the vibe. This isn't the vibe. To, this to, is not the right time to bother. The right time. Right. Right. I would, yeah, I would have loved he to might say be self-conscious. He's in a class now. He has to bike harder. His first class. Oh yeah. Yeah. But man, he's a legend, and uh, and that's made my whole trip. And what worth did he it. feel like when you saw him? Did it feel? Like he was smart. Did it feel like? Did he have perfume? Like did it? You know? Did you get any? I didn't get any scent. Did you get any vibe, you know, any feel for He's him? He's the type of guy that I think life moves like a little bit slower for him. Like when he looked at me, I had to look away before he did. Mm. We had eye contact, but it was like he was kind of seeing things like he was a, a hummingbird. Oh, wow. I could see that. And he could just kind of, he, he he knew I recognized him, but he probably knows everyone recognizes him. Yeah. And so he saw me. And then when I saw him, I was like, <gasps> and I like looked away because I didn't want him to feel uncomfortable. Yeah, and, that's fair. But uh, yo, he has a D great vibe. He doesn't have any eye color though. His eyes are just a. Uh... Yeah, he was he was nude in there. Yeah, I don't mean. Was he really? I don't mean. His no, penis, in the eyes. But, yeah, he just he just came in. Oh, you are talking about the actual color? The, yeah, he says black. He wears eye. a lot of uh, eye makeup. Oh, he well. does. Oh, that yeah. seems cool. <laughs> does he? Uh, and how much though did he wear? If he starts making flames off the side of his I mean, eyeballs, dude, then I'm fucking in, dude. You got to do some research because back in the day he was like on heroin and his hair was huge. And yeah, his, his, no, I know he does all. I mean, I've, I follow. He him does on Instagram. It anymore though. I follow him on Instagram. It's very motivational. I just, I don't know. Sometimes it seems a little bit too much ego for me, you know. But then also, I don't know if maybe that's just my ego telling me that I shouldn't try and relate to someone, you know. I think that what he's doing now, I've been following him for probably five years, mm -hmm. is probably the least ego wow. thing he's done. I'm going to check I, back in then. Because I think that he's probably, if there was a while when he was doing like a daily series that was getting like a million plus hits a day Jesus. on YouTube. and uh, So people really, they gravitate towards him. Yeah, he's like a cult leader pretty much. Yeah. And, uh, and I would, you know, I would probably join. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, he, but I think what he's doing now, I don't think a lot of people are interested. I think there's a, there, you know, he's still doing numbers. He's huge, but he's, and he's super good at talking, but. Yeah, I think he's really cut his views because he's talking about things that are important to him, which wow. I respect. Yeah. Um, and then you said that that's when you realized fake news started. Oh, whenever you did the... Um... They just wrote it. Are they, and then after USA Today wrote it, then, I mean, you could probably pull this up too, not that you need to, but everyone wrote it. I mean, it was in every paper I did a spot on ESPN right. about it. Wow. So people just took this one thing and then it and then it became real. And then I really was. They were selling t-shirts with my face on them on Franklin Street in Chapel Hill. Right. And so, I mean, I wasn't complaining, but I was like, man, we're going to have a problem. Right. We had Look. a call from a guy you really affected. Well, let's mm -hmm. hear that then. Thanks, right, Nick. Hey, Theo. This is Scott from North Carolina. I'm 24 years old, and I've had season tickets to Carolina football uh, since I was like two years old. Gang, gang. And man, I just wanted to tell Caleb that year that they went to the ACC title, and uh, that team, man, was something special. And Seeing him come out in the different pro players' jerseys every week was like the highlight of the week. Like, who's he going to wear this week? And I just wanted him to know, like, he was very important, I think, for the uh, overall, like, camaraderie and excitement. And he goes on for, like, mm. a minute. Wait, oh, you wow. Why'd you cut it? <laughs> no, <laughs> no uh, that's I'll send awesome. It, I'll email so you were, like, a real king there, man. I mean, you awesome. must have really... I mean, we went five and seven, I think. Right. <laughs> Which is very good for UNC or Duke football, either one of those. Yeah, I mean, um, going, playing football at Carolina is kind of like uh, like being a sushi chef at a chocolate cheesecake factory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, they might want the sushi, but they didn't come for the football. It's for the yeah. basketball. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, like, did you... Uh, and so now you're in with Barstool. Yeah, I mean, you're I'm over there, and it's going like, and I'm, I hung out with Francis Barstool when I was awesome over guy. There. Yeah, yeah, Francis is really, really neat, man. Yeah, awesome guy. It's always interesting because was that your first kind of like uh, 
like look into Barstool? Oh, at all. I just seen things on the app and I thought they are on Instagram. I just seen like, oh, it's funny. It's funny yeah. stuff. I mean, that's a whole nother animal. I almost got murdered off the Instagram. Oh, really? Um, yeah, dude. People take it, what, people, someone took something too seriously? Well, I had a young lady that was stalking me for, uh, actually probably for about a year and a half. She's, she'll send, she's created probably about eight different accounts and she'll, are you at the comedy store tonight? Are you here? Are you yeah. here? Um, Allie Wong has an alleged stalker mm -hmm. and she, so she always uses a fake name when she does stand up, but it's the same fake name. I think it's just because she doesn't, um, she doesn't want, uh, to sell tickets mm -hmm. in an area so then she can save her marketability. That's sm smart. Yeah, it's smart, uh, which I get it. Yeah. But it's definitely like, um, I mean, people get stalked. Did you get stalked or did you get? No, well, so well, the thing is, is it's just huge. I would say the most people who know Barstool, the way that they've got into it now was so big because it used to be just like Boston. Uh, whenever I found out about it, it was in North Carolina. I had no idea what it was because it was just Boston. But now right. it's so big and the reason why I think it grew so fast one of the main reasons was the Instagram. Yeah. And the uh, so there's just so many followers of it. So what we'll do with Barstool is really it's a curated page of of things that I think they feel like fit into the brand of like what would a, a guy who's our age like? Right. You know, 18 to 35. That what's the, what's that guy want want to see? Right. Funny videos, whatever. Nothing to to not Russell Brand trying to change your life. Just something funny. Right. Right. Yeah. Just something to take a yeah. Just take thirty seconds out of your day. That's pretty entertaining. Right. And that's kind of what the the thought process is because really Barstool is not the Instagram. I mean, it is Instagram, but it's so much bigger. And the real things that we do, and we we're content creators. Right. So that's not really what Barstool is, but that's what people's inroad to it. So we try to get people to the Barstool world. Mm -hmm. By every once in a while, we'll put some of our content on there, mm -hmm. you know, just to show them. And, and, and not unless it's some good. I think whenever you came to Barstool, they posted what you did at Barstool on the Barstool Instagram, right? And that was real original Barstool content. I mean, it was just you talking, but right. it was Barstool content. That, yeah, yeah, it was fun. I wouldn't have done done that content if I wasn't there, right? And in that moment. And so, anyway, so a lot. Of, one thing that I do for Barstool, I do a ton of different things. But one thing I have done over the years is do like red carpets. If mm -hmm. I can get access. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen you interviewing uh, maybe Albert, not Albert Brooks. Who is it? Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown, Baker Mayfield, Le'Veon Bell. Yeah. Uh, in that clip we watched. I interviewed uh, your boy Alvin Kamara. Did you really? Yeah, he's a good guy. I think he seemed like a good guy. Now I noticed the egos start to change over these players. You see him the first year. They don't have any jewelry. The second year, you know, they look like a bull with fucking diamonds hanging out. You know, it's yeah. like it's definitely interesting how the how things start to change. Yeah, A B gets accused of having a lot of ego. Did he seem like it whenever you met him? Or oh, yeah, he's got a ton of ago? ego. Yeah, Antonio Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's definitely super cocky. Not in a, I'm not saying it's a bad way. It's probably no. a good way to be as a football player. But right, definitely... it served him well. I mean, he's he's probably one of the best receivers ever. I saw him at the Super Bowl. He had a yellow mustache. Oh wow. It, yeah, I mean, <laughs> damn, <laughs> that's a boy. strong look. Yeah. No, but so anyways, at the Super Bowl is when it was. Damn, wow. uh, <laughs> uh, no, I was interviewing Migos. Yeah. And so, and the Migos, for some reason, I find myself in the same room as the Migos all the time. Like, whatever, for whatever reason, it's just something that keeps happening to me. And are they triplets or they're just black guys? I thought it was one guy for a long time. You did? Yeah. Migos? Yeah. <laughs> the one guy upset is always chasing that pussy all the well, time. So listen, so the, I'm talking to him, and and we have kind of like a little bit of history, but this year, uh, he he just famously cheated on Cardi B. Right. Because him and Cardi B were together. Right. And he had just very famously, it's like, and I asked a question about it, but I was like, you know, it's one thing, in my mind, I was rationalized. I was like, you know, it's one thing to like ask someone about their personal life it's their pers if it's their personal life. But dude, if you're, if you're dating Gwyneth Paltrow and you cheat on her and mm -hmm. we all know about it, mm -hmm. and I don't know why I choose, chose her. That's but, fine choice. Um. I feel like it's almost kind of fair game to yeah. ask on a red carpet. So anyways, right. he had just cheated famously on Cardi B. So I, when the Migos were coming, I asked him, I said, uh, and the Super Bowl was Patriots and uh, who the Patriots beat? I'm just trying to, I'm like, Rams. Rams. Uh, I asked him, I said, did Bill Belichick or the, any of the Patriots reach out to you to see the best ways to cheat in Atlanta? Wow. And as soon as I said it, dude, I was like, dude, prob that was probably not not super smart yeah and uh and he looked at me and he kind of gave me like a death stare anyways i didn't get killed that night and i wasn't worried about getting killed right but then that clip got isolated and posted without my knowledge uh or my asking on the barcel instagram because it was a funny clip okay because the, the question was pretty uh 
funny it's, yeah, and then, the quest is good and funny the, and the way he looked back was and, like oh this guy's gonna get murdered and then they posted it and then i had like it was going viral and it was like uh at caleb presley at offset mm. at caleb presley at offset so like yo he's definitely oh, gonna see this bro and i'm for some reason I'm, I'm always around these guys i'm like i'm not really i'm not really trying to uh to go down like that yeah there's other ways that i would choose to go and do you think you have you seen him again since then i haven't but what i did is i was like i talked to two people who i know in like the rap communities that work in rap and i was like am i at a real liability here right for you know should a i hit? have this out yeah. a hit or i mean if you, that's what their music's talking about people make fun of me but that's i mean that's what they say in right, that's what they say in the music. I mean, the one guy looks like maybe he used to work at a tuxedo shop, like on the tough <laughs> side of town. That seems like maybe the toughest time that they've been through. But I don't know that much about him, you know? Yeah, well, anyway, so I was asking, and he was like, and two different sources that didn't know I asked each other were like, you probably would be better off if you took that down. Damn. So I had him take it down at Barstool, uh, from the Barstool Instagram. And, wow. And, they, and, and I was worried, too, because the year before, I had the same event. St. Migos were there performing again. And Kaepernick was hot in the streets, mm -hmm. and I asked, uh, I asked Offset at this time a year before, I was like, "Have you seen the clip of him proposing to Cardi B when they first proposed?" Uh, no, I haven't. I seen. I think where he where he gets rejected on stage with all the flowers is that one. I don't. I don't think it might be though because he's on stage and then he doesn't take a knee. He like squats. Right. When he when he asked her, to, exactly. This is it right here. No, and she said no. She says yes, I think. Oh, yeah, I that. think that was later. I know, I know what you're talking about. Uh, he tried to like approach her on a, at a concert at a different time, and she like turned him down. Yeah, so. they meet up at the concerts a lot. Apparently. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of staged. It seems like. Yeah, maybe he asked her off stage, and then once he knew offset off stage, and he asked, and once he knew, he was like, "I'm gonna do it on stage." Yeah, and then he was upset. This is just still image. I was just showing him. The okay, kneeling. cool. Well, anyway, so I asked him then. I was like, when you. I noticed that you did kind of a half squat instead of taking a knee when you proposed to Cardi B. Was that a shot at Colin Kaepernick or are you just supporting the troops? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, and then he was, huh? And then that night, they donated $10,000 to Colin Kaepernick like two hours later. Wow. And they posted it on their Instagram because I think they thought that I was like- Oh, maybe that was going to come out somehow? Yeah. And they were, wow, that's it's, funny. So I kind of like raised money in a, in a weird way. Yeah. <laughs> and Colin Kaepernick got paid too once they got once the lawsuit all came through. Oh, you know? dude, he's, he's good. Yeah. He's good. Do, do you think that uh, that whole thing was so bizarre, huh? Do you think it was all just a big ruse the whole time? Like just, was he just trying to get paid? What I heard was that he met a girl who was like way like- in the like um civil rights and stuff like that mm -hmm. and that's really what kind of started him down that road yeah i mean i, I believe you yeah <laughs> i feel like that's a good way to get into civil rights do you think he was that good of a quarterback i thought he was good um I mean, he wasn't starting he wasn't playing right when that when all that happened i mean it wasn't like he was starting and then all that happened but he was good and to me like the all the question is should he be on an nfl roster to me, he's like a Tim Tebow. Right. Where he's good enough to play, right. but he's not good enough for the distraction. Yeah. Period. Yeah, I agree. If he didn't if Tim Tebow wasn't Tim Tebow, he could have been a backup quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. You think Tim Tebow brought that on himself, or are they just the media, which is like a lot of a lot of the media is kind of anti Christian, mm. that they kind of beat him down a little bit by like bringing so much attention that it um by giving him so much attention uh, that it kind of sunk him. I just think like religion is something a lot of people care about. Right. And it was a story that was obviously doing numbers every single time they ran it. <clears throat> so So it just kept so they kept running. So they kept running it. Finding new ways to run it. Yeah, just like if you watch the news, it's always bad. Yeah. Because those stories do numbers. Right. People like those stories. Yeah. So yeah, they people were get some story. fresh yeah, somebody gets a you know, a thing of fresh eggs or something, nobody gives a fuck. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know? yeah, exactly. If somebody's like, Oh, Brandon got a couple fresh eggs from his buddy <laughs> Two people are gonna click on that. Probably. Yeah, they might run. Actually, it. a lot of people. If that's just the headline, <laughs> it just depends on the yeah. demographic you're running that. Yeah, on, you I think know that's true too, man. As an internet article, that probably could do well. Could yeah, perform well. I think yeah, Filipino audience would go big, man. <laughs> They're really into the fucking eggs. The eggs are bad again too. Do you see that? Uh uh. They said eggs are bad again. Oh yeah, it's every. It's just scientific, uh, you know, study or whatever. You believe in science or not? Be honest with me. Uh, you know what, dude, I. I'm a sucker for science, dude. Are you really? Sucker in a bad way. Like I'll you, you believe tell science. you tell me anything, dude. <laughs> like I was eating eggs every day, read that, no eggs. Wow. 
I'm like, I'm a type of guy. Like, I I bought a b- lot of Bitcoin. Yeah, dude. I, I <laughs> yeah. Lot, yeah, I currently have lost probably about four thousand dollars in Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. So that's like. When of, is that scam? I mean, who's getting popped for that, dude? This is how how stupid I am, dude. I bought more. Wow. After it went down. Oh, really? Because I had a lunch with this guy no named Bitcoin Marty. <laughs> oh, of course you did, dude. <laughs> and, First of all, Jewish guy. Let's go ahead there. Is he Marty? No, he's not Jewish. But I mean, Non-Jewish he's got the money, Marty. though. He's got the money. Yeah, he's got your money. Bitcoin Marty, go. Yeah. And and I was and I just really wanted to catch up with him because since the crash, I didn't want to... You know, I hadn't talked to him since the crash. The crash since every fucking white dude uh, <laughs> <laughs> just out of college lost $2,000. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had that talked was to him. A Bitcoin crash. Bro, I didn't want him to I didn't want him to think that I didn't want to talk to him yeah. anymore because Bitcoin went down. You know, his he meant more than me. Oh, more. I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, this is beyond Bitcoin. <laughs> this is bigger than Bitcoin. This is, that's y'all's 30 for 30. If one of y'all ends up killing the other one, <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be called Beyond Bitcoin. And so I just wanted to hit him up and and so I had like a little lunch with him. And this is not that long ago. This is like four months ago, oh, three yeah. months ago. And he sold me the dream again. Damn. And I bought another one. <laughs> Damn. What's this one called? Is just one of the regular ones? I just bought the regular Bitcoin. That's how actually I lost all my money in the first time was uh mm-hmm. Oh, I bought guava. Yeah, that's what I yeah. And that's when you're in trouble. And that's how I lost my money, dude. You can't hear me? No. Oh, the chocolate? Yeah, it's people ha- people hate smacking and smacking. It's sorry guys, I just had a little chocolate. <laughs> um uh, That's hilarious. Man, this rag. <laughs> you're fine. Yeah, but dude, I, I'm a I'm a sucker for science. I mean, I'll take it. If you tell me something right now and you don't even have anything to back it up, yeah. I probably would just trust you based on you got strong forearms, it looks like. Oh, that's most of my life, dude, is probably believing stuff that I just... Because the thing about it, everything that's going on is just shit that got kind of passed down, kind of baked into society. Yeah, for sure. You know? Um, I will tell Caleb that we had Dr. Perlmutter in uh, just right after that egg study came out. And we asked him about it, and he was like, "Like, look into the methodology. It's it's debunk." He he's a big, still a firm believer in eggs, and he had a number one bestseller on nutrition. So, so we're back on eggs. Yeah, you're back on eggs. And yeah. dude, say no more. And you're back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Almost. For I'm dinner. back. <laughs> so how long you will you be out here in L.A.? Are you working? Are you here? I'm doing going right back for Barstool. We have a. I don't know when this comes out, but we have tomorrow. A, it comes out tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Or I mean, I mean, sorry, next Thursday. Next oh, Thursday. okay. Next Thursday. Well, this weekend uh, we have a rough and rowdy, which is this. That's right, and that's the thing that you host every year, right? We yeah, we do it more than we do it more than once. It's about every couple months. It it started in West Virginia, mm-hmm. and what it is, it's just normal dudes who fight each other. They right. sign up. It's amateur boxing. And is it whites it, or not? Anybody? Do white people do it? Is it whites? Oh, I mean, yeah. is it predominantly whites? Yeah, but we do. There are a few. Uh, Everybody can get in it. Anybody can get in it. We don't we don't have just whites in it, but uh you know, they're mostly whites. Yeah. But just based off the states that we do it in. Right. You know. West Virginia is where it's best though, and that's where we're going back. We had done a couple we did it in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. It's in it's we do it in places where you can find someone who wants to do it. Oh yeah, people wanna fight. Fight and Dude, they, uh, when I was in college, somebody would they had a bear, people would bring this bear that had been declawed and you could fucking wrestle it. And then they had this thing. I didn't do this, but somebody had a group called Fag Fist Fights. And it was gay men would fight each other in a wrestling ring. Mm-hmm. And um, and you did that too? No. I, <laughs> I should have probably. I would have fucking lost, but I think I would have ranked. Dude, have you uh, ever been to a... Uh, but, uh, but you could watch them and bet on them and stuff. And it was mm-hmm. like a big night at the bar, you know? Cockfighting. Yeah. Yeah, it was like it was like the original cockfighting kind of, and it wasn't. I mean, they called themselves fag fist fights. It wasn't like people were like, "Oh, this is what this is," you right. know. Um, all, other people in the streets called it, you know, possibly gay men fighting each other. <laughs> Dude, I was in uh, Louisiana, and did you go to? You went to LSU. Yeah, I went to LSU. You ever been to Fred's? Oh yeah, I've been to Fred's. Dude, one of my buddies who used to be one of the owners got uh, died. He got hit by lightning right out front of it. In front of Fred's? Yeah, pretty cool, man. Fred's is the type of place that would happen. Yeah. I went down there and went to a midget wrestling match inside the bar. Oh, wow. Fred's is probably my favorite bar in the entire United really? States. Really? Yeah. It gets fucking dirty. Anything can happen in there. Yeah. We did a tour like uh, when I first got out of college. It was the six months I lived in a bus. Mm-hmm. just in an RV. Oh, wow. And I just went to different SEC schools during <sighs> the football season. And so I went to pretty much every SEC school. Uh-huh. And uh, Fred's. And LSU are definitely top. Which one had the most aggravating accent? Because look, I mean, I'm not uh, look. I'm from Louisiana. I get it, Southern accent, but it gets fucking a little. It gets a little questionable, you know. <laughs> in Louisiana, in certain areas, in certain yeah. places, was there a, a place you noticed where the accent, like sometimes in Mississippi, you go there by Ole Miss, and some of the girls, you're like, what is, is this a? Yeah. 
like a stage play or something? Is this Tennessee Williams? Yeah, and, and then you got the people at Mississippi State who are trying to talk like that, but they're not quite good at it. Yeah. You know? Start Ganistan, that's what everybody calls that place. Yeah, just like a big strip mall. I got pink eye my 22nd birthday. Oh, yeah. Me and, and three other guys got pink eye uh, in... We woke up with it in Starkville. Oh, it was yeah. it basically it's just a Starkville. If you've never been, it's just like a big strip mall with yeah. a. It's like uh you know online colleges. Yeah. And then how they just like University of Phoenix will set up like next to a subway. Yeah. It's it's like that except it's a real school. It's yeah. Mississippi State. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I woke up there, dude, in a freaking. We were in the bus and we all had pink eye. Wow. Uh, and so I went to the doctors, which was also in a strip mall. Yeah. And uh, a lot of camouflage over there too. Yeah, they don't want you to see them. That's cool. They got a lot of camo, Mississippi State. Theo got pink eye in uh, Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, I got pink eye in Pittsburgh. I got, and I've got pink eye in a lot of places, but there's a hot strand over there, I think. Uh, in Pittsburgh. Near Starksville. Oh, yeah. There's a fucking strong strand. Well, it's like one of those things where it's like you go to Mexico, you have to get used to water. Like you almost, I think, if you go to Starksville, you get pink eye. Yeah. If it's your first time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, when you go back, you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if it's your first time, you're, you're more than likely going to get a pink eye. Um, well, speaking of states, man, in different areas, we got, we're got we headed into the final. We're in the, the Elite Eight right now, mm-hmm. Nick. You want to get us into that, if you don't mind, brother? Yeah, we're in the Elite Eight of this past weekend, State Wars March Madness, or March, late April Madness. And uh, we're going to take it to the conclusion. We, we'll have seven seven matchups to go, and we're going to start in the regional final in the Midwest. Number three, Michigan, versus number one, Illinois. Shut up. So we're going to finish this thing. We're yeah. Finish it. What an honor. You're an dude. esteemed, esteemed. Uh, what an honor, dude. Joe Coy, Nate Bargatze, Jim Gaffigan, and Brian Callen have all done the first four rounds. So. Dude, holy, yep. holy fall And this off. is the champion, <laughs> Caleb Presley, the only, uh, actually, uh, Jim Gaffigan, I think, played college sports. Yeah, yeah. And you did, so you, you two were actually... Uh, athletes, but and Brian Callen is in the seniors. I think. Oh, I was yeah. I think he's in the candle seniors. making. I don't know what he does. I was gonna say about rough and rowdy. Uh, yeah. We sh- uh, Gianni likes to box. We should get him in rough and rowdy sometime. Yeah, we could Yo. get a little Gianni in there, dude. He's a little Italian. You guys, wizard. You guys would love it, and you should have him do it because you no, know you should do. You should uh, if you want to announce it. Yeah, we have Bill Burr uh, did two of them. Really and. So what I do is I do like the sideline reporting. Yeah, yeah. And then we have guys who call the fights. Mm. And so Burr did, uh, he did two of them with us. He's awesome. He's so funny. Um, and then we have Dave, the pizza guy. Oh, and yeah. And then uh, Big Cat, who's, he has this big podcast called Part of My Take. He's hilarious. And we'll have a guest. And if you want to have him fight, you could probably pick up like a, a nice check just to announce it. That'd be fun, man. Yeah, I would lo- I would really be interested in doing that. I like to watch people fight and say stuff in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have um who's that guy that's when Francis's buddy in the in the morning that does a show with him? Um Willie? Yeah, that was awesome Willie Cologne. Yeah. Yeah, that guy's funny, man. He's hilarious. He got cool hair. Um all right, let's get into this yeah. then. We got matchup 1, did you say, Nick? Yep, matchup 1. 3 Michigan versus number 1 Illinois. Yeah, man. Thanks for being here and thanks for helping us out with this, bro. Uh Caleb all right, so Michigan, Illinois. So we're just going to declare a winner. And you've been through all of these, and you know kind of how oh, they no, got we there. Can, I mean, it's these two have never played each other. There's the breakdown. We got a video right here from me. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> this guy looks exactly like Theo. Jesus. Hey, Theo, this is Dennis, Michigan versus Illinois. Now, I was born and raised in Illinois, <laughs> but I went to college at Western Michigan, go Broncos. So <laughs> I got to go with Michigan. Illinois... Could anybody really name any other cities or towns in Illinois besides Chicago? It's all suburbs. It's all flat land. The politics are corrupt. Last year, 30,000 people left the state of Illinois because of taxes. And we're too divided. We don't even like each other's baseball teams. I was one of the few people who was rooting against the Cubs in the World Series because I'm that much of a Southsider. Go White Sox. With Michigan, <laughs> you got the Upper Peninsula, you got all that land, they are united on all fronts, they got the Great Lakes, and if it's any consolation, me, a person of Illinois, choosing Michigan is just further proof that Michigan takes it. Gang, gang. Dude, first of all, holy <laughs> shit, dude. Obviously, <laughs> I came in someone about 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> near this guy's hometown <laughs> unbelievable and this is me if i was a little bit better looking that's even the sadder part of it it's so crazy how does he not mention one time 
that he looks like me with better looking eyes. God, I'll drink that fucking kid's blood. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good. So this is an Illinois guy saying "fuck Illinois." Our first, I think that's the first time we've had that. Yeah, he's an insider. He this is sad, insider man. trading. This is that Martha Stewart shit right here. Uh, that guy. Oh, we got a, We got an Illinois supporter. Oh, awesome podcast, brother. New listener. Thanks, brother. Here's my take on uh, Illinois versus bitch again. <laughs> um, it's Illinois hands down, man. You got the ultimate army here. We're talking street smart people, tech savvy, that know their way around a gun, man, at a gun range. And don't forget about all them thugs that kick in your mama's door and duct tape them babies without no questions asked. Why is so, he smiling, though? And uh, if you try to hit Chicago in the winter, man... It's scientifically proven. If you're not from here, your balls will freeze in less than an hour. Try walking around the city of Chicago in the wintertime, man. It's a different kind of cold. Uh, shy town, bear down, gang gang, brother. Gang gang, man. Dude, I, I do this thing called called Thinker, which uh -huh. is one of the things I do. Yeah, Nick, Nick knows it. Nick's talked to me about it. It's, it's a fact of the day. It's all it is. Every day, it's like on Instagram. It's just called Thinker, and it's a fact of the day. A fact about uh, that I learned from doing that was that, did you know that Chicago is called the Windy City not because of the wind? Because of Windy, the company? <laughs> no, because uh, it's the blustery politicians. Oh, really? Blowing hot air. Oh, really? Lying. Huh. That's true? Yeah. So everyone thinks it's because it's so windy off the lake, but it's because they're just a bunch of liars. Oh, wow. And people getting fed up with it. And they nicknamed him. Yeah, but if you bring that up and it's windy as fuck, nobody's going to give a fuck. Especially <laughs> yeah. if you have to tell them that and it's windy and they're freezing. No, dude, it's about the politicians. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you know why? <laughs> yeah, that's good, though. That's a good fact, dude. I wish I knew more facts, man. <laughs> dude, you should follow Thinker. It's it's a great way to just advance a general conversation if you run out of things to talk about. But it's like, yo, did you, did you know that... Uh, that Chicago, you know, you just hit him with, with oh yeah, hit him with that straight fucking day. fact, dude. That panty dropper, dude. Another thing about Illinois, yeah. How how you say it? I say it Illinois because I, that's how I say it too. Which means that there's a silent S, which is in a in a lot of ways suspicious. Yeah, I don't know point. any other states that have silent letters. Illinois, and why, and why would you need a silent Arkansas? Letter? Arkansas, because yeah, right. Yeah, nobody says Arkansas, and that's and that's evidence, dude. They're hiding some. You think? Or they want, you know what? It's like, it's kind of like they want to, they, you know, they know, you know, but they just don't want you to say it. Well, it's Abe Lincoln country, man. You got, that's top hats. There's people with fucking balancing fucking tall hats on their heads for decades. That's the posture belt. So you're also looking at, you know, farmers, Chicago, a lot of people shooting each other up there. You got some black on black crime up there in the city. But do you think that um, those the guys railroad used to let up out there? So you have a lot of like, you know, civil rights, a lot of, um, you know, you do have some, uh, it's kind of the, it's kind of like the capital of the Midwest in a way. Do you think Chicago is? Yeah, probably. But I sometimes feel like Chicago too is, is, uh. <clears throat> they they want to be something they're not in, in a little in a in a couple ways you know right like they want to be what like New York or they want to dude be... I went to I went to Hamilton I was with Mitch in Chicago we went to visit you went to Hamilton the musical and we so we went in the morning wow was we it went, what was that like dude I fell asleep yeah and I and I had, and I thought it was because I thought it was because uh, we had went out the night before right and I was like you know what I just didn't prepare but then I went back with my parents in Chicago again because we went to a game. We went and watched them play the Rams. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to Hamilton again, and I almost fell asleep again. It's kind of boring. Yeah. Oh, it looked boring as but fuck. Dude, Even I the think, outfits looked boring. But they got such good reception. The only thing I can think is that it was really good in New York, and then when they went to Chicago, Chicago just can't quite do it. Oh, wow. They can't hold it down. They can't even support fucking Hamilton. <laughs> but Michigan, I mean, the guy said, is Michigan going to stick together? You got, you know... Well, dude, in a lot of ways, Illinois and Michigan are the same state. And, and the difference is, because they got, it's cold weather. Right. Great people. Nice people. Right. Uh, some lakes. Yep. Some good schools. Yeah. And, uh, and, but the difference is, Michigan has, has a, a bad city, Detroit. 
Right. And Chicago, Illinois has a, a pretty great city. Chicago. For their for their for their capital. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good point. When you think about that alone, the fact your capital, where you're gonna have everybody probably meet up yeah. in your top city, Michigan's gonna be like, uh I don't know if I'm going down there. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Half of your state is going to be like, eh, I don't know if I'm going down there. Yeah. You know? If you have to meet on an important issue. Right. Right. So I think that's a good point, man. I think I'm going to go with Illinois and my fucking, and my little son out there. <laughs> regional Theo, dude. And that's Regional Theo number the other, one. The only other thing I can think about Michigan is that, oh, you already typed it in. Okay. Is it too late? No. It's say, your too fa- late. say your fact. Well, I was just going to say, in Michigan, they also have, speaking of like kind of rough cities, Flint. Yeah. Which is uh where Daddy Longneck is from, my boy fucking Daddy Longneck, D L N boy. <laughs> you seen that guy? Yeah, legend. Um but dude, I think Shout out th- to those Daddy guys Longneck. if you if you made it in Flint, I mean you've you've really uh you've proven you can go through some things. Yeah. You and you know, I hate I hate to say this, but you've proven you can take a little lead, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a good point. Daddy Longneck. Let me send him a little video right now. <laughs> See if he'll get back to me. So what was that enough? Damn long neck. Uh, let's yeah. go to the, let's see what the people said and let's facetime daddy long neck real quick <laughs> and see if he has any intel was that cool yeah because he is alive right now in the meantime the people said 55 percent said michigan 45 percent said illinois so all right let's get daddy long neck in here daddy is he active uh i think he's safe i think would you say he's, he's probably Michigan's like most famous guy? Who, DLN, baby? Yeah, he's probably the most famous guy in Michigan since that guy that ran back to kickoff for uh, the Wolverines. Rock, Desmond Rock. Howard. Desmond, Desmond Howard. Go, go, Pat, go. What's up, player? You're on the podcast right now. Uh, hell yeah, let's go with it. <laughs> what kind of dog is that? Can you screen record that, Theo? Uh, I don't even know. Hey, I got a question for you, uh, Long Neck. What about this, man? If Detroit, uh, if Michigan and Illinois, the two states, got into a war, who would win and why? Uh, that, that, that's a good one. Probably Michigan, because, you know, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big-ass mitten. Yeah. And uh, fucking Illinois is big, but you know, like the, the man is a lot bigger. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I feel you, baby. I feel you 100, percent man. They call, it, they call it over here. They call it mother mitten. Oh, they call it mother mitten. Murder mitten. Oh yeah, that murder mitten. Okay. <laughs> Word, man. I got my boy Caleb from Barstool here today with me, man. What's up, bro? Let's go with it. I, I, I mean, uh, I seen uh, my video up on that. Yeah, for I, sure. I, I seen it up on that uh, Barstool uh, Snapchat. Yeah, you got to go into Barstool sometime. Have you ever been? Uh, no, I never have. Dude, he would be, you would be a great person to present the fact of the day, I think. Yeah, you should. We, we got Gang, gang, we'll do it, man. I'll connect uh, you and Caleb, man. I'll send you his information. All right, how's your cousin doing? Good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gang, bro, I like that fucking fro, boy. That's it. Fuck nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I like both y'all got different stuff, man. Word, man. Well, shout out to the murder mitten. Be good, long neck. Uh, you do. Stay lady like a titty. Gang, bro. There you go, the murder mitten. I mean, that's that's Michigan, right? I mean, you heard it first and foremost, and that's daddy long neck, dude. Man, anything can happen during state wars. Oh, anything, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so now does that, and we're going to go to you, Caleb, because you're the guest, man. Does that f- change the way you feel like they call it murder mitten? And you know Illinois, you know, is different. That's basically what daddy long neck said. Is that what he said? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't, dude. I don't think I'm in the position to to refute anything he just said. Yeah, I think we should probably take his word. They Michigan. call it murder. Mitt. What a comeback! How'd you guys meet? Me and Longneck. Yeah, 
Oh, uh, actually, the crazy thing is we are distant, distant family members. <laughs> For real? Yeah, which is the craziest part of it all. Yeah, sick, and yeah. ironically, Theo has always had a limited neck, so long neck's kind of his hero. Yeah, dude, you got that range, boy. Wait, crazy so- in the range, <laughs> son, you know? Did you dude, meet he him? can eat a chocolate off his shoulder. Did you meet him out of like a gathering? Oh no! I mean, I know I've known you know I've known that we have family for fifteen years, and that's wide neck, <laughs> and they had a falling out. Did they? Yeah, because what's his name stole all their money. Uh, who was that guy? Um, Snappy Pete or whatever that blonde haired kid is. Slappy, <laughs> uh, Smoky Danny or whatever his name was. What a dick, dude. We should try to reconcile him on the pod. Oh, that wouldn't be bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we can bring it together. <laughs> yeah, together, man. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's move on to the next one. We have Utah, right, Nick? Take yep. us in. Yep, in the uh, the West region, regional final, we have Utah versus Calatana. It was a pretty crazy Col- Colorado and Montana merged. Huh. Here is our video for Utah. Hey, what up, Theo? Gang, gang. I saw you in Salt Lake a couple months ago, man. Big fan. Gang, um, brother. So, yeah, man, Utah all the way. A um, couple reasons why. I know, I know they keep saying this, but it's... The Mormon Church, man, they have so much money. They bring in, you know, seven billion dollars a year in tithing alone. That's not to count everything else they have. Um, the other thing is, no one's mentioned this, but every once this war breaks out, man, every Mormon's going back to Utah. And this is another six million in the U.S. So then you add that to the population of Utah already. Um, someone already said this food storage. When this goes the Armageddon style and it goes no electricity walking dead type shit then it's gonna be food storage we have a ton of navajo here tongans so when it comes to that hand-to-hand combat with no electricity we're gonna kick ass bro um yeah dude so anyways utah all the way gang 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 man that's the facts so i didn't know mormons like to fight like that the way he made it sound was like the that's kind of what they what they've been working on well you know i don't know what they've been working on but it sounds like that's what they've been working on yeah, that, that's what we've learned the past couple of days. All Mormons are strapped. They they have a lot of guns and food storage. Yeah, they're peaceful until they can't be, until it's time to not be peaceful. Like, they will defend. I mean, that's what takes a lot of wars. It ends up being about religion, you know? Mm. And people, that's when people will fight, when mm. it tests whatever that thing is in the base of them that really challenges them, mm. you know? And the, and the Mormons have that group. I mean... And so a lot of Christians might, well, I don't know if a lot of Christians would band with the Mormons if things got, if it got down to religiousness, oh, you dude, know? Oh, dude, no way. Right. I feel like where are these people, they're, they're going wow, against so Colorado. Caleb really sparked up about that right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're going against Colotana, which is, is, is Colorado and Montana, which yeah. is a lot of whites. Yeah. A lot of white Christians. Yeah. It's probably going to be Christians. I mean, it's going to be a lot of whites. It's going to be people from those states. Okay. I feel like there's, there's no one more judgmental of the Mormon community than, than Christians. Wow. But that money, seven billion last year, he said. I don't know if that's true. I believe it because they all of them give ten percent of their income to directly to the church. Wow, that helps. Uh, here's the guy for. Uh, co- but how much billions do they have then? If that's they have seventy billion as a group, that's like the whole GDP of the world. They're pretty successful people. I don't know. <laughs> I told you, Ken <laughs> and they, Jennings, and, and they don't have to pay taxes. <laughs> wow. Like once they once they give the money, the they're a religion, so they're not paying taxes. That's true. Damn. And they have the food storage as part of their religion mm. is that they plan ahead like that. I mean, part of the re- Baptist, you just got to bring something on Sunday. It could be beans, <laughs> you know? Like by Wednesday, dude, that's going to be out of your system. Right. You know, like you're, you're going <laughs> to yeah. be fucking hungry, bro. You're going to be, what do we have here, Nick? This is a guy for Calatana. All right. Here's why Coltania will definitely beat Utah. Colorado, it's got Cowboys. Montana, a lot of Indians. Cowboys got guns, usually. Indians, bows and arrows. And Utah has got a lot of Mormons. A lot of Mormons. Uh, what are they going to do? Stop an arrow and a bullet with their fucking Book of Mormon? I don't think so. That's why Coltania will definitely be Utah. That guy needs to educate himself on Mormons. Yeah. What that's, else do they have? That though? seemed insensitive a little bit. Yeah, it seemed insensitive, which is that's the part of it I actually kind of enjoyed. <laughs> um, also, they will have a meeting so that everybody knows how to pronounce Colatana as well. <laughs> yeah, okay, <yes>. so <laughs> I think I'm going to roll with Utah on this, man. We actually had a, a late entry, some video came in. Uh, this, one, this was a surprise. 
Hello? Jesus. Utah. It's Virginia. Is what up, baby? Spacey? This guy's from oh. Virginia. Oh. Yeah, whoa, a Calatana. Oh. Hey. Well, we riding, baby. We back from the dead. Virginia. Utah. We gonna team up and fucking straight Merc Calatana. <laughs> All you bitches is dead. Virginia, <laughs> we got the gangbangers, we got the drugs, we got the guns, we got the military, we got the government. <laughs> Man, fuck Kalatana. We about to make Virginia and Utah. Vaguta. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Damn, bro. I think you had to bring him back. I don't know what the rules are, dude, but I think you had to bring him back. I think you make the rules, man. Vaguta is what he's saying. <laughs> Vag- were they even in the same bracket? <laughs> no. Virginia was in the south and came out of nowhere all of a sudden. Dude, but, yeah. I don't know. But co- I mean, Colorado, Montana, I don't know anything about, to be honest with you, dude. I just know that's a large state, and I know that there's there's uh, you know probably a lot of people who've, who have... <laughs> Verguta, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, take the change. The, there's an N in it, Nick. Or, I got an N. You know, take the N out. I think. Oh. Virgi- uh, Verguta. Ver- yeah, oh, that Verguta. makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> um. Wow. Gangster, bro. <laughs> I'll take Verguta over Colatana, man. Yeah, especially with that surprise attack, extra state. Yeah, you have the military over there. You do have. Uh, what else do you have in Virginia? You have the the CIA. Um, Great roads. You got weed. A lot of Aaron Brooks lives there. The Buffet Hunters. It's his new show. Um, I'll go with Verguta. You good with that, Caleb? Yeah, that's great. Let's see what the fan said. But that was before. Yo, Thir- but in fairness, they didn't even know that we were bringing back an entire state. Yeah, 33% right. said Utah, 67% Calatana. But yeah, like you said. Are we letting it get too weird, though, you think? I don't know, dude. We only have one combined state right now in the final four. Or Yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Uh, That's a good guy, point. That guy came strapped. I don't know. Was... He did have two guns in the video. <laughs> you can't see on the uh, on the listening part audio, but he had two guns in the video. Okay, gang, bro. So it's gonna in the uh, final first final four matchup. It's gonna be Michigan versus Verguta. But before we get there, we are in the East Regional Final: New Jersey versus New York. Well, this is huge. And and you live over there. I uh, live. Okay, in, I live in New York. Oh, here's a someone. Hey, Theo, what's up? It's your friend, Matt. It's late at night. I'm up, looking man? at the brackets. I see that New York and New Jersey are facing off against one another. Um, I got to go New Jersey all the way on this one, man. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, and Be uh, I don't fear New Yorkers. I worry about people from New Jersey uh, because everybody in New York, not everybody, some people are fucking to the core, but most people that live in New York City choose to live there. They moved there. Um, they have no real affiliation. People from New York, or I'm rather, excuse me, New Jersey rather, fucking were born there. Yeah. They live there. They're going to die there. Yeah. Whether they're from Newark, New Jersey, whether they're from Asbury Park, they're listening to Bruce Springsteen, they're listening to Bon Jovi, and they have a beautiful state to go retreat to. Most people don't know Appalachian Trail runs through northwest New Jersey. They got mountains, they got rivers, they got lakes. This is the most important point. Everything that goes into New, Jer- New York comes through New Jersey. If you stop the 18-wheelers, wow. New York's going to be suffocated in four days. Dude, I don't know, dude. I'm from, New Jersey I, all the way. I live in New York. Mm-hmm. I'm from North Carolina, but I live in New York. I think that New Jersey there might be a type of state that like looks good coming off the bus. Yeah. Big muscles. Yeah. But not a lot of functional strength. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, not a lot of core strength. Yeah, it's it, a lot of biceps, not a lot of core. Yeah, you're right. Because yo, know, these guys are in New Jersey. These guys are uh, they want to be in New York. They all their best things are New York stuff. And I'm not saying that as a hater. Right. I, I love no, New, no, I no, love no, New no. Jersey people. But dude, let's be honest. What's the what is their what's the city that you know? They own, the only one anyone knows. Newark. It's a New York airport. Newark. What is probably their biggest resource? The Milk. Giants and Jets. Or milk. Also, they have a lot of cattle. New Jersey, 
uh, water, I think, is like a resource or something. They have a lot of rain. The Sopranos. The Sopranos, yeah. Uh, Tom's River, that baseball team that uh, that tries every year, the <laughs> kid children's softball team. Look, I agree. What about this, though? New Jersey, I feel like New York City's gotten so gentrified, <clears throat> so rich, whatever you call it, yeah. you know. That there's not, you can't even get mugged anywhere anywhere except for Al Alphabet City. You can't even get fucking stabbed except for in Alphabet City. The odds of getting shot in New York City anymore? Psh, you better fucking, you're going to have to drive over to, you know. To New Jersey. Uh, right, over to New Jersey, yeah. right. To really get like, Hoboken is kind of like a place that regular people can afford to live now. Right. Brooklyn, I mean that like, dude, I saw some graffiti in there. It was like, Larry sucks dick, right, in the urinal. And it said, but only if he's okay with it right like they're so fucking liberal it's like what the fuck are they really gonna like fight or throw yeah. down they're gonna pick it they're gonna protest but now then you get up to rochester dude with that's the overdose belt bro up in the roc dude with fucking people listening to brother wheeze in the morning on the radio and eating dirty italian and celebrating saint patrick's day nine times a year <laughs> those motherfuckers with the neck tattoos and fucking square wheeled roller skates those motherfuckers are getting bent bro you get up into there in any of the suny school dude that's fucking rape country bruh what does this guy have to say hey theo it's mike from rochester new york all day new jersey's stupid they're gonna be attacking new york city because they think that's the capital and they can they we don't mind we're just gonna send out them rats from the subways we're gonna get those soft gentle whites to greet them help new york city with their problem and that that's when the real action that's when upstate New York comes and helps and wipes out New Jersey. You know, we got Syracuse, Ooh. Albany. You got Rochester, yeah. which, one, we're poverty, and we got some real killers in the city. So <laughs> we ain't fucking around. We don't even need Buffalo. Buffalo can just come and supply the beer and wings. Am I right? <laughs> gang, gang. Buffalo's got Thurman Thomas, where you give him a gun, he'll fucking run through the whole fucking state. <laughs> Uh, it's a tough one. This is very tough, dude. There's a lot, dude. There's a lot of uh, in New York. There's a lot of Jews, and um, yeah, it's jade up. And they and you know, <laughs> they don't believe in afterlife. They don't have if they die, if they go down, right. they're done. But we, are you talking American Jews? Are you talking Israelis? Like an Israeli guy? I'm afraid of an like, American Jew is going to hire somebody to die for him. You know? Oh yeah, for yeah. Wait, or they're just Uber drivers. Yeah, <laughs> we got a lot of them too. Dude. <laughs> there were a lot of Uber drivers who I feel like a lot of them came here to avoid this type of situation. Right, which is a is a travesty for them. But the I will say this: New Jersey has one thing going for them. They have Long Island. Yeah, and Long Island for New Jersey is a truly a Trojan horse because I've been to Long Island. I have a lot of friends from Long uh, Long Island. I had an intern who was from Long Island. Yeah, they call it everything. Wrong Island, Bong Island, yeah. Strong Island, and you know Dong it, Island. And you know what it is, though? What? New Jersey in yeah. New York. It's a Trojan horse. It is? Dude, the people in Long Island, they're from New Jersey. They are. For sure. Yeah. It's the one place they can still get into New York and be a part of it, you know? When the shit hits the fan. I mean, New York's already shown they fucking, you know, a couple of slims fucking drove a couple of airplanes into the damn buildings, you know? So they've already shown that they can't fucking hold it down, really, if shit gets hectic. But, dude, also living in New York, and this is from personal experience, it's already kind of like wartime conditions. Yeah. Because you travel underground. You know, it's uh, very expensive. A lot, a lot of taxes and fees for everything. Right. Uh, and see, don't see the sun for long periods of time. Yeah. I, I do think that that uh, extensive subway system could really come in handy. Mm. Yeah. That's true. That's a good point. And that's just the city, though. Now, you got to get out into the rest of it. The thing about Western New Jersey, New Jersey's huge. People don't realize that. The thing about Western New Jersey, what's out there? Milliken, Lehigh. You know, tons of fucking, the Amish are out there. They got all kinds of wildness <laughs> out there. You know, it's tough to know what how it's going to break down. Lehigh University is in uh, New Jersey? I think so. I might have guessed. I, d I never knew it, but they're always a 16 seed. It could be Lehigh. It could be in PA. <laughs> um, we're we're going to let you call this one, Kayla Presley. Dude, I think I would feel real bad saying New Jersey when I live in New York. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like wishing wishing, <laughs> wishing, bad on yourself. I'm going to say New York. And I'm going to say New York, uh, and, I, and I have a lot of respect for people in New Jersey, but I, I think New York probably takes it, dude. Yeah, I'll probably say that too. Just shout out to even just being up in Rochester. You know, these people are eating. Their, their main food of sustenance is called garbage plates. So they could eat right out the dumpster, bro, and be right at home. 
All right, I'll roll with New York. All right, our last regional final, Florida, uh, the combined of Florida and Georgia versus the uh, number one Texas. Let's see. Let's see what some video submissions we got here. Oh. Hey, Theo. Hey, Nick. Just wanted to get a quick vote in for Florida, however you say that. <laughs> um, I'm in my office, so I'm having to, to, to talk quietly. But looking at the population, even though Texas is bigger, Florida and Georgia have more crazy people, so I know we would be fighting to the death. As well as uh, if you add our population together, we're at 31.8, wow. and Texas is only at 28.7. Mm -hmm. So we got more crazies and more people if you add us together. So um, shouting out to you from Waleska, Georgia. Gang, gang. See ya. Waleska. Thank you very much, young lady. Wow, nice so, to have a hottie fucking send in something, huh? Yo, not bad, dude. She looked like she was a big fan, too. Oh, yeah, dude. She seemed like a sweet lady. Kind of lady definitely wouldn't mind, you know, starting a future together. <laughs> um, this is David from Houston, Texas. What's up, Theo? Gang, bro. Just wanted to give a shout out to all the truck drivers out there and want to leave a comment about Texas and Florida matchup. Mm -hmm. Just one thing I got to say about Texas, man. We fought for our independence. That's all I have to mention, man. Thanks. <laughs> So they've already done it. What, 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 what was that? Was that the Alamo? I guess. Who knows? I mean, but Texas, has, Texas, yeah, <laughs> they fought for their independence, dude. Apparently, but right, we're talking about it. remember the Alamo. Yeah, but they didn't get it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I, so Florida and Georgia are combined. <laughs> That I can't tell if this is still interesting or the most boring fucking podcast <laughs> material ever, you know? <laughs> We've been going through this for a while. Yeah, this is about six weeks. You probably heard yeah, it. Yeah, I know. So many people are like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but also, I said with this, this with uh, Gaffigan, I think years from now, this could be a reference that people use. <laughs> That's how crazy the world's getting. This might happen. <laughs> could you see us going to state governments? I could see it, and I would, I would support it. I would too, especially if they told me that there was a reason why it would it would work. Yeah, why not, dude? What I don't. As long as you can travel from state to state, who cares? Yeah, right. Yeah. Except some states might be like, ah, fuck it, you ain't coming over here. You know, build and that I'd wall. Respect that. Yeah, build I mean, that wall. There's probably some states that probably exited in the first round who, they're you know if they're not part of the United States, they probably lose a lot of what they have. Right. But those are you know those are some of the weaker states. Right. So these are, are top tier states we're talking about. Yeah, these are top tier states. I mean, Florida and. Jo being uh, associated with Georgia, I think, legitimizes Florida in a lot of ways. Mm, I could see that. Because, I mean, Florida, I think a lot of people, myself included, kind of think of it as a another place. It's kind of like a, oh, yeah. almost like an Australia-type vibe when you go. Yeah. And I would be interested to see maybe if we could look up, Nick, some uh, war records of Australia, how they do. Because mm. I think that could probably go. Be they were in one predictor. war. Mel Gibson was in it, and I think he he and his brother actually ended up making up at the end. It's called Gallipoli. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, and also, I I like what you're saying. It legitimizes Florida because, like, I think of Georgia as like Southern, like it's like classy, like yeah. they're Southern gentlemen stuff. So. Yeah, and definitely a lot of people from uh, General Sherman's March to the Sea are still living there. Descendants of that over there in Georgia. <sighs> you think they have a lot of pride for that? I, I think so. I think you're going to immediately see. I mean, there's going to be a lot of like, there's a lot, that coastal area over there, Jacksonville, there's a lot of military all along there. Um, one guy in his video said Texas has the number one amount of enlisted pe people living in their state, too. I can so. see that. Either. Well, dude, if this happens, te they're going to have to uh, literally hold tryouts in, te in Dallas Cowboy Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many people that want to fight. I'll go with Texas then. If that's the case, then. Yeah, and I will say Texas, they came out video-wise, like, the most by far yeah. Uh, submissions. Yeah. Yeah, dude, and also Florida doesn't have any anybody over, like, the age of 30. Like, if you go there, everyone's already died from, from like, a... You know, they got a lot of drugs. Right, it's 30 or under or 80 or over. Mm -hmm. And, and, and everybody they, over 30 dies on that show the first 48. Well, dude, if you... <laughs> that's if you, always in Miami. If you... They they have to import their old people. Yeah. Because if you're from Florida, like, you have no chance. That's a good point, actually. You get skin cancer, a, a <laughs> botched plastic right. surgery, bro, you're done. Fall off a balcony. Oh, yeah. yeah. Somebody put an ass cheek into some guy's throat and fucking almost killed him. So Texas does it? I think Texas does it. This is our final four. New York. Let's do Texas. it. Texas. Michigan and Verguta really came out of nowhere. No one would have guessed that, I think. Verguta. I like that. So let's start in uh, Michigan versus Verguta. No videos to... Michigan versus Verguta. I mean, really all we have to go on 
out of Verguta was was that one the strength of that, that one killer. guy. <laughs> who first of all is the first killer who is sent in a video. Yeah. <laughs> I mean the guy was camouflaged up wearing different things to prevent us from seeing him and had more than one gun. Real guns. Uh Here's some, can we look at the states, what they look like? Some facts about Michigan. Dude, you know what's crazy? Hmm. Michigan, have you ever seen what it looks like? A mitten. Yeah, but this is the <laughs> thing he didn't tell you. And this is the thing I didn't really know until pretty recently. Uh huh. They already took over like half of Wisconsin, and I didn't even know. Really? Dude, if you look at a map. Dude, see see how the it's red up top? The uh-huh. UP. Gaffigan Dude, was talking about that. There's no, there's no reason that should be called Michigan. <laughs> it's separated by a body of water, and it just like they secretly took over some of Wisconsin that Wisconsin wasn't utilizing properly. Gang, bro. I think they gave us a choice between Door County, the thumb of Wisconsin, and UP, and we took Door County. That's a thumb. That kind of looks more like a bottle opener. But if you have Virginia cruising all the way across to fucking roll with Utah, <laughs> also, dude, there's just that one guy. That's true. <laughs> he definitely looked like he was murder specific. But that one guy in Utah could really flank Michigan, being they they're on both sides of it. I forget who's who's Virginia flanking. I'm trying to find Michigan. some other stats. Oh, Michigan. Yeah, some other stats right here about some of the places I want to look at really fast. Utah uh, has more regular church attendance than any other state. I want to let you know, uh, whooping cough is huge over there in. Um, Actually, that's in Wisconsin. But engineers, Michigan has a lot of engineers in it. Virginia is the home of bad drivers, it says. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not a racial slur. Dude, here's, here's another um, thing about Utah. I feel like if the war, where does it take if it go down? Because if it takes place in Utah, here's something I know for a fact. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be able to fight in a lot of the state. Those are national parks. Oh Ooh. wow! Protected areas. Yeah, you can't you, you can't have a around. war in a national park, dude. And this is a war, but we're not we're not crazy. Oh <laughs> yeah, not while somebody's trying to have a split a sandwich with his son in a tent. <laughs> Sorry, you know man. what I'm saying? This is gonna have to happen, in, you know, in Michigan. Michigan, Verguta. What do you think, man? What do you think, Caleb? You're the one who's got to take us through this. I hate I, to say it. I, I, I'll go ahead and I'm gonna say this. I have a tremendous amount of respect for the guy who called in and basically got Utah to the next round and reestablished Virginia in this tournament, which I don't even know at what point they were eliminated. But are we gonna are we gonna really just off the strength of this one guy and the the passion of this one guy and he he was intimidating? Are we gonna let them go all the way to the final? Or Michigan is a real state? I mean, at the end of the day, dude, you're talking about a real state that exists. That's a good point. Yeah, and I, I, you, you brought it up, and we brought it up in past episodes. The fact that they were able to survive through that radioactive Shout out to lead them. water, like they're strong, resilient Flint? people. Yeah. Well, even Daddy Longneck called in and said it's called murder mitt. <laughs> yeah. You know, I already <laughs> forgot about that, dude. He's definitely oh, Michigan. I think. Don't forget that, bro. And his cousin Alan Keith was on there too. All right, let's roll it in. Then Michigan, it is, man. Uh, real Cinderella story. I don't think anybody when this tournament started would have said Michigan. I was going have. all the way. I wouldn't have, and I still can't believe I am. It's, I think it might. We might be going to a uh, anticlimactic championship <laughs> game: <laughs> New York versus Texas. Caleb Presley. New York versus Texas. All right. Did so, you guys ever play Texas when you guys are or either one of these states when you were at uh, UNC? No. No. What you, Your experience with Barstool, have you noticed anything at these places? Texas, I've been. I'm trying to think what I've done. I've been to um, I've been to Texas. Actually, I went down there. Do you know, bro? So I went down there to do a video this year because their coach, Coach Herman, yeah. was before the games were starting, he was kissing the players. Oh, yeah. You saw it. Oh, I didn't see it, but I believe it. So, but it's like, <laughs> and it's, I, I support it. So I went down there and I was kind of doing like almost an investigative journalistic piece of of why. Why are we kissing the players and why are we only kissing <laughs> them on, on the cheek, dude? <laughs> like, let's get yeah. serious. You want to win some games. Uh, yeah, that's crazy, man. And that shows you there's love right there in the heart of Texas, dude. I'll tell you this. New York fucking, half of New York would overdose on their way across the, oh, that's beautiful. Half of New York would <laughs> overdose. All your boys from Rochester are going to overdose in the desert on the way down there. They're going to overdose even just heading down there. Um, I think... Texas is going to have some severe move. They're going to be mobile. They're going to have a strong Latino contingency. Um, Can you imagine how many people in Texas, if it, if it does go to war, are going to say, told you so. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, well, like, about time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, they'd be ready, man. Oh, fire! I guys, up. this is pretty easy, honestly. It's, it's definitely Texas. Yeah, yeah. This is Texas, I think. Why would a juggernaut? Texas Michigan final, which is a great football game. This is something you might see on January one. <laughs> oh, this is a great football game right here. And this game happened, didn't it, with uh, when Vince uh, McMahon was at quarterback or no? Who no, was that was there's USC. no chance. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, Fuck, man. Yeah, you're right. Uh, okay, Michigan versus Texas. We had one video for just general Texas. Okay. Theo Vaughn. Now, I'm not from Texas. I'm from Louisiana. But I know for a fact that Texas is going to win this entire bracket. They are almost 30 million people. And think about this. They done already beaten all the people around them. You know that for a fact. They've barely had any casualties. They also got our poncho wearing brothers to the south. Now, all this combined, you already know they're going to be beating whoever is in their way. That's it. Gang, gang. Gang, gang, brother. I appreciate that. That's true, man. I mean, Michigan, you're going to have tetanus. The tetanus scare alone from them <laughs> On struggling with drug use and trying to make weapons in those old rusted out factories, mm -hmm. it's gonna be, it's gonna be sick. Like a lot of dude. Where do you think this goes? Mixed down? children, a lot of people. You know, a lot of biracial kids who don't know what's going on are gonna need therapy probably before they can even get out of the state. You know, uh, are they gonna band together? I mean, Caleb asked an interesting question. Where will the the war play out this final battle i think nebraska is kind of right in the middle just flat yeah. land i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of cities in texas i feel like <clears throat> are kind of it kind of wouldn't matter if, if it happened there yeah it just i think it would be the same it's not like the city's bad but it's just kind of yeah you are gonna have a strong latino contingency you know i mean you're gonna have who knows how many people are really in texas too if you count the hidden illegal aliens from i mean they could be anywhere from anywhere canada mexico maybe um anywhere and dude there's tycoons there oil tycoons yeah which i used to play this game uh when i was growing up on the computer called a uh, roller coaster tycoon mm -hmm. and i don't think they're actually correlated or similar but uh dude fantastic game really yeah you really felt like you were i think a tycoon is just someone who's very successful in business uh-huh and i think uh and oil tycoons I can only imagine them coming in on a horse. Yeah, yeah. And really kind of establishing their dominance. And you don't waste time. Who's our leader? Right. You know, Tycoon's the leader. Well, Jerry Jones, and then they're helping him. Yeah. Oh, and Jerry Jones got ultimate, you know, he got a real posse factory running over there with them Dallas Cowboys <laughs> and share letters, bro. Didn't Tycoon play for the Black Sox? Was he part of the Black Sox team? Uh, I'm not sure. I could see this. Ty, Ty Cobb. Ty Cobb. <laughs> yeah. Ty Cobb, Ty Cobb man. Yeah. Well, we agree on that. I just... This round right now, um, and I just think Michigan just falls apart at this point. I think it's just been too much for them to to handle. You know, they took on Iowa. They took on Nebraska. Uh, you know, they beat Kentucky, uh, Illinois, Verguta. <laughs> I mean, there's probably nine people left, dude, and two of them are listening to Kid Rock. Another one's Eminem. And the other one is Eminem. And he's not coming out of the house. No, he isn't. He, he's flip-flopping so much on what he's about. I think I, w I would say Texas. Yeah, that guy had a great point about not a lot of casualties. They had a buy. They steamrolled through a couple rounds. They're they're fresh. Yeah, that's it. My vote. I'm not going to decide your entire tournament. This is your tournament. This is this past weekend state wars. But <clears throat> my vote is Texas. There you go. Texas, it is. Wow. And that's it. And Caleb works for Barstool, and he also played uh, backup quarterback to a, a younger man. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> If anybody is qualified to fucking pick who should win the war of all the states, <laughs> to me, it's definitely him. And Thanks, bro. I would like to put it out to the fans. If anybody wants to put together a montage of all five episodes and put it to one shining moment, uh, I think that would be incredible. Uh, that's like my favorite part of the NCAA tournament every year. <laughs> yeah, and uh, some, some Luther Vandross. And uh, these wars play out. I think it could really, really be beautiful. That would what people use as a reference point. Yeah. I think we can use that as a commercial for next year, too. And I think next year, maybe we'll do the brackets different. If we put them in a different, you know, come out of just we actually rank them. I think there's a chance that certain states could lose to other states. And it's also depending on who's in the in, in the uh, in the shotgun seat here. Yeah, dude, I'm looking at North Carolina get eliminated first round. I don't know how that happened. Yeah.
And a lot of people don't, man. <laughs> I don't know how West Virginia got put out. Yeah. They didn't feel it for sure. Where did you want? Uh, and you have an old lady, you said, huh? Yeah. And where'd you meet her at? And sorry to ask you about that. At, I met her at North Carolina, but I really didn't start dating her until New York. Oh, wow. Well, she I lives just met her in passing, kind of, yeah. Oh, wow. She works at Soul Cycle. Oh, yeah, you told me that. Yeah. And that's where you met Russell Brand. It's been a big day, man. Dude, it's been a, a great day. Yeah. This is going to go down in history. And we, dude, I know we're kidding about this is going to be called for reference. Who's kidding? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it easily could be. <laughs> but I, I think that this is something that, at the very least, we made some salient points about these states that it's kind of it's kind of time for self-reflection in a lot of ways for some of these yeah. states. Well, I could see it. I mean, look, some states and some areas are really pulling the weight for other areas. Yeah. And and also, other, different places have different ideas of what pulling the weight means. Some people think pulling the weight is working hard. Some people think pulling the weight is uh, being, you know... In Tennessee, that's just going to Dollywood. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, some people think it's just different stuff, yeah. you know, taking care of their kids, making money, having a job. People think it's all different stuff. So, and also, like, shout out to the people in Texas. I have some some good friends from Texas, good people. But just because you won state wars, I'm not sure that's a shining endorsement of your state. That we think that you're going to be the best at, at mass genocide. Right. Yeah, I, I read a quote this just this morning. Actually, uh, war doesn't decide who's right. It decides who's left. Who has the most guns. And we already knew that was Texas. Wow, really? As in remaining left. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I was wondering what it meant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy, dude. A lot of quotes, they should put what it means after it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Sometimes I read a quote and I'm like, what is this about? You know? Yo, one time I was in, uh, that was like a first class, first day of class at Carolina. Mm -hmm. And our teacher handed out a page of full of quotes, like Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton, the gauntlet of quote people. Mm -hmm. And then one that was just like, I can't remember, it was like H.B. Scott. Mm -hmm. And she's like, raise your hand and tell me something about one of these quotes. And I raised my hand, trying to get in her good graces. I was like, H.B. Scott's quote <laughs> is straight up stupid. Like, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And she was like, that's that's me. <laughs> she, put, she, she was H.P. Scott? Yeah, she put herself wow. amongst amongst the greats. <laughs> <laughs> that's a crazy move, dude. I remember when I went in a, some class and they told us about uh, Stonehenge, you know, and like, what does it mean? We're going to find out. And I was like, what if God was just fucking with everybody and just set some rocks up, you know? <laughs> and the lady's like, get out. <laughs> First day, and I thought it was like fun, you know, yeah. like a fun way to talk about stuff. And just as possible as anything else. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. Who knows what if the Lord does dominoes. Um, Caleb Presley, thanks for uh, coming and helping us get through the state wars. Sorry I'm a little bit tired today, man. I think I would have had more energy, but, you know, we did it. Yeah, thanks for having me, dude. It's been a, it's been great. and uh, Yeah, and we got to come back over there in Barstool and do your uh, show. Bring Daddy Longneck. Oh, uh, look, I'm going to connect you guys in just a few minutes, man. Yeah. <laughs> that murder, murder mitten. You know, they call it the murder mitten. And Theo's going to be announcing Gianni fighting Rough and Rowdy. Oh, yeah. No Dude, time. if you want to do that, you actually, you should do that. Who could, who would he fight, though? Let's pick a fight right now. And Gianni's the young kind of twink guy who books our show, and he's also going to be in a movie with Octavia Spencer in about six weeks. Shut up. Yeah. But he's also the young twink guy that books our show, and we pay him in me undies. <laughs> so, but um, look, that's what God wants. Well, yo, who he fights, I've seen it all. In West Virginia, dude, I've seen two identical twins, both named Bubba, yeah. fight each other. I've seen in Myrtle Beach, I saw a, a overweight, I don't know if it's overweight's the right word, but a cam girl. Mm -hmm. And I helped her train, and she, wow. lo she lost. She lost, damn. Um, <laughs> I've seen it all, so we can probably make it happen with whoever. If you want to see see, a, see him get his ass beat, we uh, can make that happen. Or if you want to see him, you know, make a good name for your podcast, we can make that happen. You, like you said, he, it, Gianni's short and he, he's he's stocky, he's built. I would love to see him fight like a tall, lanky black guy. I think that would be a fun. Yeah, fun, that could be exciting. Or a black woman. Yeah, I think we it have would, women. Yeah, or I just a really tan guy. Dude, there's no rules. Yeah. There's the other thing. There's like no like. Oh, you're 300 pounds and you're. Uh, 180 girl yeah i'm not actually they don't do guys versus girls but pretty much everything else is like fair game but if it's a really tough girl i could see i could see them going toe to toe <laughs> if she's tall and if maybe she played at least d2 basketball does that cam girl want to come back maybe that could be the matchup she came back as a as a ring girl so <laughs> and instead what of, happened she got knocked out <laughs> no instead of fighting so we have ring girl competition too Oh Jesus. so she was like twerking and uh she did a split in the ring she's flexible too. somebody's gonna get fight. this sounds like a fucking this sounds like a Me Too claim waiting to happen. Oh, that's that's us. That's me and her. Wow. Oh, I like how you part your hair like that. Thanks, dude. 
<laughs> Go, she she actually dumped them out right before. It's pay per view, so you can have a little bit of nudity, I think. Oh wow, it's pay per view. Yeah, so she dumped them out. Rough and rowdy. If if you're gonna miss it by the time this podcast comes out, we're doing it uh, this Friday. But dude, your listeners would love it. So we'll you're going on. to West Virginia. You're going to West Virginia this Friday. I'm going straight there. Wow. We'll, we'll put it on on this past weekend Instagram at least. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it, we have them though. We do it a couple times a year. Yeah. And dude, seriously, you should come. And you should, you should call his fight if that's all you want to do, and just check it out. Maybe next year we'll get Johnny, and we'll see. Maybe we could have him fight another someone else from another podcast. <laughs> yeah, like fight Bobby Lee's little brother. That um, I think something's wrong with him. But we could have them fight Stevie Weeby. Yeah, Stevie Weeby. First of all, nobody's last name is fucking Weeby. <laughs> you know, um, Caleb Presley. Thanks so much, man. We'll uh, we'll do this again soon, bro. Yeah, appreciate you, it. Appreciate and tell it. Kevin and the other guy, uh, the uh, Francis and the other fellow with yep. the red hair. What's his name? Donovan, Daniel. Oh, uh, John Feidelberg. John Feidelberg. Is he the one you were saying that you thought was gay? Mm, no, it was a different guy in there. I met real quick. But um, tell him I said, hey, man. Interesting. I can't wait. I want to talk to you after this and just find out who's who. Well, we've discussed a lot. I feel like we probably. We'll talk next time. <laughs> no, I'm joking, man. We'll uh, we'll chat after. But uh, uh, thank you very much for helping us get to the end. I think that's it. Texas number one. You know, perfect. So if shit gets if shit hits the fucking fan, you know where to go. One shining moment. That's it. Gang, gang. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone. Take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself all wild shine.